So we believe in preaching about being healthy. We believe in preaching about being wealthy. Do any of y'all mind that? So there's some people who say, don't you preach no prosperity message. What do you want me to preach? Poverty message? I think it's easy to master that one. How do you master walking in prosperity? Hello? And if you're not quite there yet, don't sweat it. You're going to get there. It's impossible for you to be a child of God and not walk in prosperity. Hello? You say, what are you talking about? Hang on, I'll show you. It's taken me 10 minutes to do my introduction. God also wants you wise. Say healthy, wealthy, and wise. Healthy, wealthy, wise. Amen. You do not believe the devil's lies. See, we're to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. The devil says we're to be sick, we're to be broke, and we're to be stupid. I refuse to be stupid. How do you stay away from stupid? You do what God's word says. Now, stupid is more of a modern colloquialism. It's, you know, it's kind of slang. King James, it uses 189 times the word fool. Everyone say fool. fool. What is a fool? A fool is a person that does not do what God's word says to do. Fool. A fool says in his heart, there is no a fool says in his heart, there is no God. That word 189 times in the King James, fool, is someone that is stupid. They're not, there's not such a thing as an agnostic. There's not such a thing as an atheist. There is such a thing as a God denier. Why, if there's no God, are they fighting and screaming against a God? Why would you even care if there wasn't such a thing? They're denying that there is a God. I know a couple, they're so mad at God, they don't like God, God let them down, I don't want anything to do with God, I'm an agnostic, I'm an atheist, I hate God. Well, does that make a lick of sense? If you do things God's way and you walk according to his precepts, you are wise. Everyone say, I'm wise. I'm wise. Say, I choose to be wise. I choose, wise. I choose to be wealthy. I choose to be wealthy. Because that's what God's word says about you. Right. Amen. Say, I choose to be healthy. I choose to walk in divine health. Amen. Now, if you will... I've got a scripture on my phone I want to give you. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. You don't have to turn there, but you may want to jot it down because it's not on my piece of paper. God bless me. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, it says, My people are destroyed for a lack of... Knowledge. My people, louder, are destroyed for a lack of... Knowledge. My people are destroyed for a lack of... You have to have knowledge or you'll be destroyed. Knowledge of what? The world's way? The world's way of operating? No. The, the knowledge has to be of God's word. What is written in this Bible is vitally important for you to know. If you don't know it, you will be destroyed. Everyone say, I will not be destroyed because I want to know what God's word says. Amen? My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So why come on Sunday night if your schedule permits? I'm not bending any arms. If you can't show up, I understand. We have a dear couple. They drive from low, low. Dear, they can't come on Sunday night and Sunday morning and Monday night and Tuesday night. You can't do that, and I've got that. I'm okay with it. But if your schedule permits... You know, if you have small kids, you can't come, you know, unless you're just a super mom, but you can't come. We've been there with Michelle. Jesse and Michelle been there with Grace. We understand. You know, don't, don't beat yourself up. But I'm telling you, in this hour, the hour we're living in, it's insane what's going on. A bunch of evil people are trying to do a bunch of evil stuff, and God is going to prevail. 
and his people are the head, you're not the tail. Yeah. Everything you touch will prosper, right. and the plans of man will not succeed against Almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. You've got to get this in your heart. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. knowledge. Now, let's look at Psalms 35 and verse 27. If you'll turn to Psalms 35, verse 27. Hallelujah. We're going to work on this until we do this. It'll be spontaneous. I won't have to push a button and cause your seat. I put an electric probe underneath each one of your seats. I know how to push that button and make this happen. But I'm not going to do it this morning. I want it to be spontaneous where where you can't control yourself because the Word of God is so alive. The power of God is so alive inside of you. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation. Salvation is the power of God unto prosperity. It's the power of God unto divine health. It's the power of God unto deliverance. It's the power of God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the good news. This is good news we're preaching, amen? It's not depression. You say, well, you're giving so much hope and these are hopeless times. That's a lie from the devil. That's him saying he wants you broke. That's him saying he wants you to have absolutely nothing. And and to be happy about it. That's a lie from the devil. He may be speaking through a person telling you that. Speaking through the the, uh, electronical box on your wall in the living room. A lie from the devil. Amen? (coughs) Hallelujah. It says in Psalms 35 and verse 27. (coughs) You guys ready? Let them shout for joy. Wow, that was... Really exciting. (laughs) Let them shout for joy. Everyone say, hey! Let's try it again. Let them shout for joy. Hey! Look at all these smiles. Look at your neighbor. Everyone shout for joy. Hey! You say, this is insanity. Where's this coming from? Open the book. What book are we looking at? Come on, tell me, what book are we reading this from? Bible. Amen, this is called the Bible. <laughs> Psalms, Psalms in the Bible. It's the Bible, it's the Word of God. Let them shout for joy. Do it one more time. Hey! Look at everyone smiling. Joy, some of you are laughing. You don't need an antidepressant. Come on, wake up. I'm so sad. You, you look like Eeyore, and you talk like him. You know, Winnie the Pooh, Eeyore. Oh, life is just so difficult. Shout for joy. Ah, glory to God. Look in the mirror and just start shouting. Oh, my spouse will think I'm nuts. I have a clue for you. They probably already do. Shout for joy. Sweet Lord, did I have my hand on that button? (laughs) Amen. You don't need antidepressants. You don't need alcohol. You don't need drugs. You don't need all the other vices. What do you need? You need a good Holy Ghost shout. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. I mean, fan the flames. Stir your. You you say, oh, I'm a a little church mouse. I don't. I don't do that. Well, you need to go into your closet all by yourself, shut the door, and a little squeaky mouse voice go, hallelujah. (laughs) Until, yeah, start somewhere. You know, you have to prime the pump. You know, we irrigate here, and we have pumps, and we have little irrigation ditches, and and you have to prime the pump, especially if you have one from 40 years ago. I imagine, have they improved them any, or are they all finicky like they used to be? You have to prime the pump. Prime the pump. Glory to God. If that's, what it, if that's where you're starting, start somewhere. Amen? Amen? But, I mean, let's get with God's word. Let's agree with God's word. See, it's being wise. I choose to agree with God's word. He says, shout, then 
then, then watch out. I'm going to shout. I'm going to scare the devil. I'm going to scare my wife. I'm going to shout. Amen. Go out in the backyard and shout. Let all the neighbors look over the fence. But shout. Let them shout for joy and be glad. Some things are going to happen when you shout to the Lord. Walls are going to fall like they fell at Jericho. The last time we had a Sunday night service at the barn over there at the fairgrounds, I said, line up. We're going to do a Jericho march. And we walked around. How many of y'all were there? We walked around seven times. I said, not one person, just like the Bible, not one person is going to say one word. Not one word. You can all keep your mouth shut, but you think. You put your mind on that thing you want to happen. And I said to myself, God, I thank you for this barn. It's drafty. It's cold in the winter. It's hot in the summer. There's mouse poop everywhere. They try to keep it clean. They try real hard to do a good job, but those mice got, you know, little creatures. They just don't behave. They don't help the fairground staff out. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this, God. You get, you get us someplace, and you get us someplace quick. And I'm seven times around. I'm just giving God down the river like this. I'm putting my request. I'm making my prayer a petition. I'm letting God know, hey, this has got to happen. You hear me? Seven times, seven laps, seven laps. And, and the devil's saying, everyone thinks you're nuts. Everyone thinks you're crazy. They're just following you because you're so big and bad. That they know you'll put a whooping on them if, you don't, if they don't follow you. So around and around we go. And I said, now, the entire, on this seventh trip around, we're going to shout, and you're going to shout the whole way around. The next Sunday night, guess where we were? The next Sunday, we're, we're sitting in this building. Hallelujah. 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 Amen? Amen? You say, well, that's foolish. You walk around quiet seven times, and then you shout this, on the seventh one, and, and, and something, something ha- that makes no sense. God's ways are not our ways. They're higher than our ways, amen? And, and he chooses the real simple things to confound the wise, amen? So let them shout for joy and be glad and that favor my righteous cause. His righteous cause is living right. You say, how do I live right? Read the last half of each epistle. Most epistles are four, four chapters long, so read chapters three and four. If they're six chapters long, read uh, three, four, Three, four, and five, and six. Anyways, I'm not good at math. <laughs> Read the last half of each epistle. Amen? 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 Amen. And that tells you how to live your life. Go way out there and read Leviticus. Woo! It'll tell you what not to do what with. And you'll sit there and go, my Lord, I can't believe this is in the Bible. I can't believe God's saying this stuff. I mean, it's shocking. Read Leviticus. If you want to be entertained, read Leviticus. Hallelujah. Favor my righteous cause. I choose to live God's way. I'm not going to make up how I should live. I'm going to do it God's way. Amen? I'm not going to say something contrary to how God says to live. I'm not going to live contrary to how God says to live. I'm going to do it His way. Yea, let them say continually, everyone say continually, 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 continually. continually. You're going to say continually. You got it? You're going to say it over and over and over again. What are you going to say? Let the Lord be magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. God has pleasure in your prosperity. Everyone say, God has pleasure. In my prosperity. God has pleasure in my prosperity. God has pleasure in my prosperity. Hallelujah. Who glory. Can you see why you would shout? And if you're wealthy, if you're a multimillionaire up in here, God wants you wealthier. Amen. I mean, like I said, if it takes a million dollars in a wheelbarrow to go grocery shopping, God's going to give me a hundred wheelbarrows full of a million dollars in one day. Amen? 
the wrong, dictate, the wrong dictator so much as hiccups, your million dollars could vanish in one second. Hello? Our trust is in God. It's not in a bunch of paper in a bank. Our trust is in God. Some trust in horses, some in chariots, but my trust will be in Almighty God. Amen? Glory to God. He takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Now turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and 10. We, we're not to be covetous. I can't look at another person and think, oh, sweet Jesus, she's so wealthy, I want some of that money she's got. Look at that fine car she's driving. All that gas she puts up in that car, she needs to buy one of those little pedal pushers and, and uh, like the Fred Flintstone drives. And, and what the heck, she's got that such fine car for. Don't be covetous about another person. See, you got covenant. Say, say I've, I've got a covenant with God. My covenant, the covenant with God, God co covenant with us, it took the blood of Jesus, and he promises. God speaks something. It, he's not a man that he should lie. This is the truth, absolute truth, infallible truth. He wants you to prosper. He delights in your prosperity. And it took the blood of Jesus to remove the curse and to put you into a land of prosperity, a land of abundance, a land of more than enough. Amen? 1 Timothy 6 and 10. So don't be covetous. Think of the covenant instead. Don't be covetous. Think of the covenant. Get your mind on the covenant that was made between God and you through the blood of Jesus. 1 Timothy 6 and 10. This is amplified. For the love of money. Say love of money. Love. See, money is not the root of all evil. What is the root of all evil? Say love of money. That word love is what's important. Money is not evil. It's the love of money. The, it says, for the love of money, that is the greedy desire for it and the willingness to gain it unethically. Do you know of anyone that gains it unethically? We can think of one group of people in one city, <laughs> in one building. Unethically. And they can declare, oh, we'll, we'll legally embezzle it all. Oh, that makes it right. We'll legally gain a hundred, a 225,000% in 10 years. Can you imagine playing the stock market? And in 10 years' time, your profit is 250,000% in 10 years' time. If you know anything about the stock market, if you gain 10% in, in 10 years, you're doing quite well. 250,000%? Something might be a little off with that. But enough of that. We're talking about the love, say love of money. Love of money. Get it in your head. It's not money. It's the love of money is the root of all evil. Gaining it unethically is the root of all sorts of evil. And some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith, wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves through and through with many sorrows. Is, does money do that? You better say no. Does money cause you to sorrow? No. What causes the sorrow? It's the love of money. It's the willingness to gain it unethically. It's the willingness to put the screws, pardon my language, to someone else so that you can get money. You can't say, well, this is just business. This is just what you do in business. No. We're Christians. We're Christians in our bedroom. We're Christians in our living room. We're Christians at the grocery store. We're Christians in our business world. We're Christians 24 hours a day, no matter who's in front of us. Amen? Amen. And we're not dealing necessarily one-on-one -on -one with a person. We're dealing one-on-one -on -one with Almighty God. Before God. Amen? Now let's continue on. 
it, it makes rich, and he adds no sorrow. Okay, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10. He pierces himself through and through with many sorrows. The love of money will cause many sorrows. Say, the love of money, love of money. will cause many sorrows. Now turn to Proverbs 10 and 22. See, this is all Bible. If you read it and you come up with something different, please come and tell me, okay? I mean, look at these scriptures. This shall cause you to get excited. I promise you. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22. I'll give you a minute to get there. It says in Proverbs 10 and 22, the blessing of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord, the blessing of Abraham are, is ours through Christ Jesus. That's Galatians chapter 3. The blessing of Abraham is ours through Christ Jesus. You read about the blessing of Abraham, Genesis chapter 12. Proverbs 10, 22, it says, The blessing of the Lord, it makes you rich. R-I-C-H. The blessing of the Lord makes you rich. The blessing of Abraham is ours through Christ Jesus. Abraham was very wealthy in silver, gold, and all kind of livestock. It names it in the book of Genesis. The blessing was upon Abraham. He was wealthy in silver and gold, all kind of livestock. It says in Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Now, the love of money, it will do the very opposite, opposite thing. It will pierce you through and through with many sorrows. But God's blessing will make you rich with no sorrows added to it. God will make you rich with no sorrows. Hallelujah. Do you see that? The devil's way doesn't work. There's people. We were flipping the channels and came across this family. I said, Michelle, who are these characters talking? Who are these people? One of those reality TV shows. I don't watch television of any type. It's just boring to me. I find this book to be quite entertaining, to be quite funny. It's full of emotion. It's full of attitude. It's full of drama. It's full of rape, murder, mayhem, gossip, lying, deceit. I mean, it's full of everything. You want to read a novel of all novels, read this. You want to meet with Almighty God, the lover of your soul, get into the book. Amen? So I said, who are, who are these characters? She said, Dad, they're the most famous people I said, and who might they be? Since they're so famous, I don't know them. She said, the Kardashians. I said, the what Ashians? She said, Kardashians. I said, what is their problem? She said, Dad, they're so rich. They're, they're worth billions of dollars. I said, all of them? She said, each one of them. I said, you're kidding me. I said, what's their problem? The one man, he's married to... I'm sure she's married to someone else by now, but the one man at the time, he says, I'm so depressed. They said, go buy another house. He said, I've got 20, and, and I buy one, I fix it up, I remodel it, and I spend millions, and I'm, I'm still depressed, something's missing. Go buy yourself another you know, $350,000 sports car. You know, the cars are that expensive. He says, no, 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 I, I've got 30 of them in my garage. I just, they just don't do nothing. I say, I'm so empty, I'm so void. What, what is he void of? What is he empty of? What's missing in him? It's Jesus, it's God, it's the Word. You get this Word in you, everything changes. There's no sorrow. You can have all the money in the world and you have nothing. It's not about money, for money's sake. It's about uh, God made Abraham wealthy. God blessed Abraham so that he could turn around and be a blessing to others. God has blessed Denise and I, and we can turn around and bless others. Now, if you come up to me and say, God told me that you're to give me a, a pile of money, I would say to you, well, when God tells me I'm to give you a pile of money, then I'll give you a pile of money. But thank you for the heads up that I'm to be listening to him concerning you. Goodbye. 
I love you, but I'm not stupid. Amen? Amen? And I mean, we bless people. Amen? Uh, what it is, in doing that, I'm really not blessing you. Now listen close, because I'm going to go off the rails here. I'm using you. Everyone say, oh, God, please, Mike, use me. I'm using you. Like a farmer takes his seed and uses that dirt. Without that dirt, no seed is going to come up. No, no harvest is going to come up. He's not going to reap what he's sown if he doesn't use that soil. And I see you as good soil to plant my seed. And I'm expecting a harvest, not from you, but from Almighty. I'm not necessarily giving it to you. I'm using you as a vehicle, like a farmer uses the soil as a vehicle. I'm, I'm using you, but I'm really giving it to Almighty God. I'm, I'm lifting it up as a gift to Almighty God. I'm saying, God, I'm planting a seed. And then the next thing he, he does is he blesses me. Amen? Do, do you see what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Sorry, Dan, I couldn't help myself. Dan told me, quit looking at your watch. Y'all brought your, your uh, picnic basket, right, and a sleeping bag. We'll just go till 10 o'clock tonight. Is that okay? Amen. Hallelujah. Are you getting anything out of this? Amen. You get this in you. You get this in you. Because throughout the day, if you think money, if you think inflation, if you think any, any thought like that, you need to get your mind on the word. Amen? I'm not beating you up. I'm giving you instruction. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. I'm telling you how to combat the world system. I'm telling you how to believe God for 100 wheelbarrows full of a million dollars a day. What would that be? That's a whole heap of money. I told you I wasn't good at math. That's a bunch of money. And if it takes that much, then you're going to have that much. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen? Don't you dare say, I'll never own a house. I'll come back there and slap you silly. That's what we say down south. Don't you dare say, I'll never own a house. You, you, that thought comes to your mind, you say, I'll own a fine house. I'll own a dream house. It's going to happen quicker than I ever could imagine. My God is working for me. Amen? I put the principles of God to work. I put seed in the ground, and a harvest comes up. Amen? And I, listen to me. I'm not going to take up an offering when I'm done with this. And on Sunday nights, we have, we have the, 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 the teaching. We don't take up an offering Sunday nights. Our goal is to get some knowledge in you to equip you so that you can face the days ahead with victorious success, be an overcomer, be a conqueror, walk as a child of Almighty God. Be a sign and a wonder to the world out there, and they look at you, you, you and your family, and say, how in the world are they doing it? How? And you smile and say, my God is alive. Who's your God? Jesus. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. A little boy brings loaves and fishes to him. He multiplies them. He, he raises them up, up and blesses them. That little loaves and fishes, that wasn't enough to feed the thousands that were there. He lifts it up and says, bless this fish and loaves. And then instantly the power of God's all over that. You never curse the little bit you have. You bless it. God, I thank you. That, that, that man that Jesse was talking about, he took that $8, and he said, God, this isn't a whole lot, but I bless it, I'm going to lift it up to you. And within a short period of time, he, that guy's totally out of debt. Has, 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 I'm, we're going to have him come up and tell his story himself. Jesse did a great job, but he got some of it uh, a little bit backwards, the, the sequential order of it. But you got the general idea. God did something supernatural for that man. Supernatural. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's continue on. No sorrow. God makes you rich and he adds no sorrow to it. Amen. Now, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17. You were just in uh, 1 Ch Timothy chapter 6, so you should be able to find it real good. 1 Timothy 6 and 17. I'll do this verse and one more, and then we'll quit. We'll quit on time. 
Miss Denise will say, what in the world happened to my husband? She'll say, I got to feed him four eggs every Sunday. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17. Tell those who are rich not to be proud and not to trust in their money. I've already done that, right? I said the, the, wrong, dictate, the wrong dictator hiccups, and next thing you know, everything in your checking account, everything in your bank account, everything in your stock investments, your treasuries, your bonds, everything you have, everything everyone has. You say, Mike, you trying to scare us? No. I'm saying don't trust in. I'm saying, I'm saying have 100 wheelbarrows full of a million dollars, but don't trust in that. Who do you trust in? Who do you trust in? Who do you trust in? Amen. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but I will remember the name of the Lord my God. Hallelujah. What is the name of the Lord my God? It's El Shaddai. What's that? A covenant name. I'm not going to be mindful of being covetous, but I'm going to be mindful of the covenant. What is his covenant name? El Shaddai. What does El Shaddai mean? God of more than enough. More than enough. More than enough. More than enough. He's more than enough. He, he provides more. If it takes a one wheelbarrow full of a million dollars, uh, hallelujah, more than enough is a hundred wheelbarrows, a million dollars in each one. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of trips to the grocery store. Gas station. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Don't trust in. Do not be proud and do not put your trust in money, which will soon be gone. How many of y'all have seen anyone up at the graveyard being lowered down into the grave, taking all their silver, all their gold, all their finances, all their, all their wealth? How many of y'all see someone clinging to it, taking it with them down into the grave? You say, Mike, that's a morbid thought. It's reality. I've seen people, you know, it's what we do. You go to the, you go to the, go to the uh, nursing home, it's all they talk about. And I'm like, sweetheart, you're days away from death. And all they're consumed with is their finances. They don't want their kids to have it. They don't want the grandkids to have it. They're, gonna, they're determined. They're going to take it with them. Do you know I've never seen one person do it yet? Not one. We came in with nothing. We're going to leave with nothing. If you're saved, you're going to have Almighty God. You're going to stand before Him. He's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen? Amen. He's going to say, you put me first. You gave my son, G Jesus Christ, preeminence in your life. You're going to say, you're a born-again child of God. You're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He's going to say, there's your mansion. Walk on the streets of gold. Uh, six o'clock is the banquet table. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're going to have a banquet with the, with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Angels. Angels. And they're not those fat little babies with a harp up on a cloud. Angels. Hallelujah. Everywhere. Singing. Worshiping God. We'll worship Him 10 million thousand years. It'll seem like two seconds. Kind of like my preaching. I go on and on, but it seems like two seconds, right? <laughs> Thank you for that vote of confidence. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, to, to be saved, to surrender your heart, to say, Jesus, I need you more than anything in the world. I need you. I need your blood to wash me clean. I need you to make me a child of Almighty God. I surrender my life to you. No, I don't want you just to be my Savior. I want you to be my Lord, the Lord of my life. I want you to be my master. I want you to be my God. I serve you. I lay aside everything. That old man's dead. And I put on the robes of righteousness. I'll live the righteous way that your word commands me to. I'm going to be your child. I'm going to be your ambassador on this earth. I'm going to represent you and your kingdom on this earth. You've equipped me with the Holy Ghost. You've equipped me with the word. You've given me angels. You've given me your great and precious promises. I'm going to be the man, the woman of God. You've, I'm going to be the mother, the father the godly man and, and, and woman that you want me to be representing to my children what a true Christian is. Amen? Amen. I trust in you. It goes on and it says in 1 Timothy 6, 17, tell those who are rich not to be proud and not to trust in money, which will soon be gone, 
But their pride and trust should be in the living God who always, say always, always. richly, richly. Gives, us all gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Oh, glory to God. How many of you take enjoyment in hunting? <laughs> How many of you enjoy a nice compound bow or a real nice hunting rifle? And like uh, 10,000 rounds of ammunition. That'll make some people watching this, that'll make their heads explode. Amen. If you enjoy it, how many of y'all enjoy a nice fishing boat? How many of y'all enjoy a nice snowmobile and, and quad and side by side? How many enjoy a nice embroidery machine? And I'm trying to think what women might enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how many enjoy real nice pots and pans? <laughs> Uh, a crock pot? I don't know. <laughs> How many enjoy a vacuum cleaner? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm trying so hard. How many enjoy uh, horses and, and riding? And, and, and you know, I, mean, I, I don't know. You know, I told you what I enjoy. I told God I've not hiked up one of these trails. Nowhere. I, the beautiful Bitterroot Valley, I, I look at it from the street and wave at it. And they say, you haven't gone anywhere. And I haven't hiked around Como. They say there's a sidewalk around it now. It's like, I don't care. And people say, man, you need to see it. I'll see it in the new heaven and new earth. I mean, I'll, I'll see it 3D, Technicolor, surround sound. I'll see the life of God all over it. But right now, i got a job to do. This is me. You go and enjoy life. I'm enjoying my life. You enjoy. God, it says here, who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. You enjoy a big old Harley? You want a big old Harley? God will, God will, listen, richly give us Harley we need for our enjoyment. The God, God always richly, always richly gives us a big old fine house we need for our enjoyment. God wants you happy. God wants you to enjoy this life. God doesn't want you... Oh, you'll have nothing and be happy. Uh, what in the world? Who, who's going to be happy if you have absolutely nothing? Don't you dare raise your hand. <laughs> See, seek ye first the kingdom of God. This is Matthew's gospel, chapter 6. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things, everyone say things, will be added unto you. What were the things that he's talking about? The things are mentioned, previous verses. The clothing. How many of y'all like to have fine clothes up on your body? Some of you like me. If I would have my way, I'd have nothing but a t-shirt and one pair of pants. I'd be happy. I'd be so happy. I'd be thrilled. I'd look in my closet and I wouldn't have to go, shirt one, two, three, or four. I mean, that wears me out. <laughs> I, go into, I, see, I go in the store and I see uh, $2.50 for a stack of t-shirts. I want to buy them all black. No decision to make. I mean, life is good. I'm happy. Miss Denise, she won't hear to it. It's like, what in the world, lady? You know, but I, I make her happy, so I let her, you know, here's your four shirts, Mike. I'll wear one shirt all week long. Y'all don't notice what I have on. You know, you never noticed until I mentioned it. <laughs> Hallelujah. He gives us all things for our enjoyment. If some woman wants the biggest ring looking like Elizabeth Taylor up on her finger, then hallelujah, let her have it. Don't, <sighs> what's she got up on her finger? <sighs> That's covetousness. What's that have to do with God? Your relationship with God, not, not what's up on someone's finger, amen? Forget about their finger. Forget about what's out in their front yard. Miss Denise loves yard art. Thank God we're not down in Alabama. Uh, down in Alabama, they, they, on their grass, you people have fit with grass here, they, 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 they get four cinder blocks, jack up a car, put the four cinder block under the car, let the car down, that's yard art. <laughs> Some people have six, seven yard arts up in their front yard. It's like, what the heck? Uh, toilets. I've never seen such a thing. Six, seven toilets, and they put dirt in it, and that's a flower pot. It's like, what in the world? Miss Denise likes yard art, but she's high-end. She goes to Walmart and buys yard art. 
you go by our house, you'll, get, you'll just chuckle. It's like, yeah, my grandma, she used to do that. Don't tell Miss Denise I said any of this. <laughs> I'll be in such trouble. She never watches me. <laughs> I'm safe. I'm safe. Okay, last scripture. I've, I've gone two minutes over. I've got to get this real quick. Now, I've only finished half the sheet. Uh, the rest of it, I, I want to preach something new besides the sheep here. But, but, but what I'll do, what's on this, I'll eventually get to. I, I, I'll, I'll give it to you. It just comes up and out. You know how it goes. And, and flowing's a whole lot better than being, uh, you know, chained to a piece of paper. Amen? Flowing with the Holy Ghost. One of these days, I'm going to come in here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just do like I did for 15 years traveling. Sometimes I'd say a half a scripture, and the power, the power of God would explode in the place. And everyone's like, good Lord, what's... It's he, he walks in the place. And you just, you're like, sweet Lord Jesus. I mean, his, his presence, it's tangible. And uh, hallelujah. Everything happens. People are delivered. Delivered from tobacco, delivered from alcohol, delivered from all the vices. You say, what's a vice? It's stuff you can't talk about in church. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is family environment. But it's up in here. Amen? Because there's people up in here. I was there. Amen? He set me free. It's what he does. You need the anointing. You need the power of God. Amen? Uh, there's a transfer of anointing through the laying on of hands. It'll set you free. And, but then you have to choose to live in it. Amen? There's a, there's a transfer of anointing just speaking. Just If you tune in, just sitting under the voice, the power of God's word coming out my mouth, it'll set you free. It'll deliver you. It'll heal your body. Talking about prosperity, it'll heal your body. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay, last verse. Job, everyone say Job, 36, 11. Uh, Joey, if you'd come up so please uh, and, and give Dan half of these. Do not pass them out till I tell you to because they won't pay attention to me if they got this paper in their hand. I know how y'all work. I, I do the same thing. It's just human nature. Don't pass them out. You give Dan half. You, you choose... Joey, I'd let Dan do all the work. Give him where all the people are sitting, and you do this. 99% of the time, I, I came in this morning, I thought, what, the, what in the world? This side's, this side's not packed out. Normally, this side's always packed out, and now this side is. I'm like, what is going on? There's been a shift. Been a shift. Amen. The building's leaning. <laughs> Amen. Have you found Job yet? 36. It says, if, say if. Anytime you see that word, it's going to be conditional. Here's a promise of God, but it's conditional. It's conditional. Everyone say conditional. conditional. Say, I've got to do something. I have to do something for this promise to work. Say, if I listen and obey. Say, you can do face palm, right? Oh my, I got to do that. You know, there are some people, you tell them to do something, they'll do the exact opposite 100% of the time. You tell them, please sit here, they'll stand up. You say, please stand up, they'll sit down. You say, please turn left, they'll turn right. I was at an international ministry. Uh, we're, we're in Clearwater, Florida, well, Tampa, Florida. Tampa, Florida, Rodney Howard Brown's ministry. He has parking attendants, and they're telling you where to park. And I thought, I'm going to park right here. There's 20 empty spots. I'm going to park right there. The man comes over in his yellow vest, and he said, uh, Sir, you don't want to park there. I thought, bless your heart. I know, I know how to park a car between two lines. I did good. I said, why don't I want to park there? I thought, he's not going to tell me where to park. I, this is a parking place. It's good as any. He said, Sir, you're in front of a bar. This man hates Christians. He hates our church. If you park there, your car will not be there when you come out of church. I recommend you move your car. I said, thank you for telling me that. <laughs> I'm moving my car. He said, it'll be impounded. It'll cost you $1,500 to get your car back. I said, I love you. I appreciate you talking to me. Say, listen and obey. 
you know, we got a little three and a half year old. We're teaching her how to listen and obey. She listens, but boy, that obeying part can be kind of hard. Amen? Y'all ever have any kids? Were y'all a child at one time? Y'all, your mama ever tell you, take the trash out? Ma, I heard you. Well, you didn't obey me because you didn't take the trash out. Remember those days? Okay. If you listen and obey. Where, is God speaking to you in an audible voice? Hear ye, hear ye, almighty God here. I'm going to tell you something. Y'all ever hear God like that? No. So where are you going to hear God? Where do you hear God? In the Word. This book. you got to get into the book. Because if you listen to this book and you obey this book, God will speak to you through this book and you do what this book says, watch what happens. Then they will be blessed with prosperity throughout their lives. You'll be blessed with prosperity throughout your lives. You'll be blessed. And in Proverbs 10.22, which we read, the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow to it. Hallelujah! Amen. Glory to God. Let him shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause, that favor my way of doing things. Let them be glad and shout for joy that will listen and obey. And say continually, he has pleasure in the prosperity of me. Say, of me. of me. Hallelujah. Is this okay? Did you gain a little knowledge? Amen. Amen. This is the word. I could go on. I could literally, I could go on eight hours a day for about six months. Seven days a week for six months, eight hours a day, just talking about this one subject and not repeat myself one time. The Word of God, if you read from Genesis, I'm going to be in so much trouble. Genesis, let's turn there. Genesis chapter 2, this is well worth your time. I want to prove to you something. The law of first mention, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 11. The, the name of the first is Pishon. This is, this is the creation, Genesis chapter 1. I love you, Denise. Genesis chapter 1 or, uh, is talking about creation. God said, it happened, and he said, it's good. God spoke, it happened, and he said, it's good. God spoke, it happened, and it's good, okay? Now, in chapter 2, God's telling Adam and Eve some things. The name of the first is Pishon, and it is the one which skirts the whole land of Havilah where the gold is. Verse 12, and the gold of that land is good. He told Adam and Eve where the gold was. He told them where it was. When you think of gold, do you think of poverty? Do you think of lack? Do you think of not enough? He told them where the gold was. God, when he created this earth, he put what in this earth? And when you, th when you think of gold, what do you think of? Money, 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 money. Everyone say money, money, money. Money is not a four-letter word. You can say money in church. Say money. Say money. God told them where the gold was, and he, God also said it was what? He said it was what? Good. Hallelujah. You should get excited about this. To the point where you shout and you think of the covenant it took the blood of Jesus, the cross of Christ, to redeem us from the curse. And, to, and to, the curse is poverty. The curse is sickness. The curse is the second death. We, we are born again. We're children of God because of the cross of Christ, because of the redemptive work of Jesus. And he's redeemed us from the curse. We don't have to be in poverty. Amen? Amen. He put gold on this earth, not just for Adam, but, but the last Adam, Jesus Christ, he wants us to have the gold. The gold. Hallelujah. The silver, whoo, glory to God. I mean, I mean you, you, you meditate on this, you dwell on this, you get it in you, and you start shouting. You'll be driving your car. You'll have to put it in park, pull it off in 93, put it in park, get out of your car, and have yourself a Holy Ghost fit and scream to the top of your lungs. Ha, glory to God. And, and Sheriff Deputy, drive by looking at you thinking, uh-huh. 
Hallelujah. Okay, stand to your feet. We'll say a prayer. Get the piece of paper from the, the gentleman. Uh, mind you, I quit 45 minutes early. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love you guys so much. I thank you for endearing me. I try so hard. I said, I don't have much. This little tiny piece of paper, it won't take me but 15 minutes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Father God, I thank you that you confirm. Listen to me. I thank you, Heavenly Father, you confirm your word with signs and wonders. You do the supernatural for every man, woman, and child, for every family in this place. We heard your word. It was preached with anointing. It was preached with boldness. It was preached with clarity. It was nothing but your word. I gave a fraction of the verses in your Bible that concerns prosperity for your saints. Father God, I thank you that you confirm that word with signs and wonders. You confirm that word with prosperity. You confirm the word with abundance, with success, with favor, unmerited, like we've never experienced in our life. I command in Jesus' name for abundance to come into every house. I command it to come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Abundance, angels, bring it in. In Jesus' name, everyone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Turn and hug.